Before we start this video, a large thank you to Ava, Jason Lumsden, Aaron, Isfandier, Jean, Mansur, Muhammad, Marco, and Brian for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello guys, and today we're going to make it so when we load our character, we're going to refresh the scene and sync the data from the uh, character save data file that we created when we save our character's data. So first, I'm going to add this line of code here on the save game data writer because I forgot to add this in the last video as a commenter pointed out. Right now, this will always return null, the loaded save uh, data. So we're going to say loaded save data equals JSON utility dot from JSON character save data. And then we're going to say save data to load. So this is actually going to make it so this value is not null. And when we ever want to get data to load it back to our character, um, now we can do that. So over on the world save game manager, I'm just going to make a new function called load game. And this, as it suggests, will be uh, a function to load character data that we have previously saved. So I'm going to make a comment here. And in the future videos, we're going to decide a file based on the character slot that you've selected. So for example, if you have multiple character slots, you want to make sure you're selecting the right file to load. I'm then going to say save game data writer equals new save game data writer. And I'm going to say save game data writer dot save directory path is equal to application dot persistent data path. And then we're going to set our file name as the file name we have here. Again, in the future, this will be determined by the character save slot that you're using. But right now, we're just going to say equals file name because we only have one. All right. Uh, right below that, we're going to do a little scene loading. But first, we're going to say current character save data equals save game data writer dot load character data from JSON. And that will get us the character data that we previously saved. So I'm going to come in here and say start coroutine. I'm going to call this um, load world scene asynchronistically. I'm probably spelling this wrong, but that's okay. And this obviously isn't a function that is made right now. So I'm going to create that in just a moment. So right below the load game function, I'm going to come down here and say private I enumerator load world scene asynchronistically. Just going to spell it the same way as I have it spelled above. Probably not correct. I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Okay, so now we're going to say if player is equal to null, because you're probably loading the scene from your main menu, we're going to say player equals find object of type player manager. We have to make sure this is not null when we want to load the scene. Um, you can also just say return if you have another method of um, describing your player in the scene. I'm just using this because right now it is the easiest for demonstration. So we'll say player dot load character data from current character save data. And then we're going to pass a reference to the current character save data. And this function obviously does not exist yet. It's going to be a mirror of our um, save character data. And I will show you why it's, it's going to be very simple when you see what we have to do. So let's go up here and say using unity dot scene management, this will allow us to um, well, unity engine dot scene management, sorry, this will allow us to just basically use anything scene related. And we're going to do this, um, or we're going to use this rather because we're going to load a scene asynchronistically. So we're going to say async operation, load operation and asynchronistically just means we're going to do it while this other scene is still open, everything else is still happening. So we're going to say equals scene manager dot load scene async. And I'm just going to make sure I get the right index for my for my uh, scene. So for example, I'm gonna say zero. And if you go to the game here and go to edit, uh, pro no, sorry, not project settings, it's actually under build settings, which I believe is under file, not edit. So file build settings, there we go. You can see it says zero here next to my sample scene. So you want to pass that. Um, in my case, this is the world. And my main menu, for example, could be um, index number one. It uh, doesn't matter, but just make sure you get the right scene you want to load. Now I'm going to say while uh, load operation is not done, we're going to say float load progress is equals math f clamp 01. And we're going to say load operation dot progress divided by 0 0.9 f. Um, and basically, we're, if we want to now, we can enable a loading screen here. If you're wondering why I'm saying divided by 0 0.9 f, Brackies has a great video on loading screens. It explains this. Um, but I won't go into that right now. When we come back and do the loading screen, I will explain this further. So basically, if you want to insert a loading screen yourself, you can do that right now. You can pass the progress to a slider on the loading screen and then enable and disable it when your loading is done. Um, this is something I'm going to do when we go uh, into loading into a scene from the main menu. But I'm going to put it here now because if you want to go ahead and try it yourself, 
uh, this is a great start. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and um, go to the player and get back to the actual um, topic of the video. And we're going to go right below save character data to current save slot. I'm going to say load character data from current character save slot. Um, so what do we do here? Well, it is the exact same thing as the save function, except inverted. So the opposite. So right now I'm taking current character save data dot character name equals player stats manager dot character name. <clears throat> and uh, down here we'd say player stats player stats manager dot character name equals current character save data dot character name. So you get it when you're saving it, you're writing the data to the save file. And when you're loading it, you're writing the data to the character from the save file. So it's just the same process, but reversed essentially. Um, so just go in here and whatever you have, uh, mirror it. Now, some things will be different. Like for example, I'm just gonna show you. You can't write down transform.position.x equals um, current character save data dot x and then do the same thing with the y and then say that's the character save position dot y and then the z and then that's the save position dot z this won't work so before i correct that let's actually go over to the world save game manager and what we want to do now is oh apparently i've spelled this wrong okay sorry that's a load world scene that's why that was giving me an error uh, now go back over here and uh let's go down here what we want to do on the load character save data from character save data file and so this thing transform that x here is going to say vector 3 position or call where you want you can call a character position if you like is equal to new vector 3 and then you assign all those values we just put here um so the character save data dot x uh the character save data dot y and then the character save data dot z so you're still taking all the values exactly as they are but you just have to assign them in a vector three and if you wanted to instead of saying uh, vector three you can just say transform dot position equals new vector three or you could make a vector three and then assign that vector three after whichever you prefer it's honestly all the same so let's save that and then we go back here and we say load game here on the update function if we're calling load game now what we want to do is go here and basically make our player manager public on the world save game manager um, and then this is because on awake on our player we can assign this player to the player on the save game manager so what we just if you have the title menu here when your player object is instantiated um, obviously the awake method gets called and then we can say world save game manager instance player is equal to this this is just one way to do it we could save this now and then we minimize this Let's go back over to the world save game manager and make sure you put this load character data after the scene load. That's a mistake I made. Otherwise, your position will just get reset when the scene loads. So let's go over here. Now I'm going to save the game. I'm just going to walk over here first to change my transform. And then I'm going to hit the save game bool here. And then I'm going to move to a different place on the map. Well, if I hit load game, you can see the scene refreshes. But now if I leave this area and go over here and I hit load game, you'll see I pop back here. And I'm loading all of the data that I just saved. So that works as intended. Now, I want to discuss a few things before moving on because obviously this is the functionality and it's all there. But there are some important things you need to keep in mind when, um, when considering your order of operations. And by that, I mean when considering where you're placing these things. So on the topic first of multiplayer, for example, um, we declare that our player object in the world save manager we basically declare that on awake that it is this player object. So if you have multiple player models in multiplayer, you can't put it on awake. Um, what you do for Unity Netcode for game objects, for example, is you still put it on awake, but you make sure you're only assigning it to the host player. So I, I won't get into too much detail because we're not touching multiplayer right now, but uh, just consider these things long term when you think about positions. Now, in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to make an item database. We're going to give all of our items a unique item ID. And we're going to be able to save the items to your inventory and load them using that item ID. Uh, we're also going to go over how to save dictionaries. And we're going to make it so, for example, if you loot an item in the world, the world knows you've already looted it on this profile. And the next time around, it won't spawn it again. And this logic can translate to things like bosses. So if you know how to do it for items, what I'm trying to say is you can do it for everything else. So if you kill a boss, then the world can then know not to spawn this boss again for you, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, so yeah, that's coming out. I didn't want to put it in this video because it will be really long and it is a different subject. So this is now we have the general saving and loading out of the way. Now we can get into specialized things and uh, more niche um, things inside saving and loading. So a special thank you, as always, my patrons. It is because of you guys. I get to keep doing this and I do love doing this. If you've been this far, please be sure to drop a like, leave a comment. It does genuinely help out my series so, so much. I know I say that all the time, but it is the truth. All right. I will see you guys in the next one.